Well, hello team. Whoa, check that echo out. Loving it. Let's try and get that sorted out. Audio settings. There we go. Okay, that was cool, wasn't it? Like a karaoke singer. Welcome people, we are live, we are direct. It's Tuesday Tips live with me, Phil, here at Digital DJ Tips. Uh, and it's great to be here. It's a great topic we've got today. Should DJs play the whole tune or should they be quick mixing and cutting quickly in and out of the tracks that they're playing? Uh, it's something that has been talked about a lot recently, uh, not least over on our channels, on Digital DJ Tips, on the Global DJ Network, which is our, our group for DJs, which uh, is on the screen now, uh, which I'll tell you how you can get in the Global DJ Network and join the many thousands of other DJs in the Facebook group by DJs for DJs. I'll tell you how you can be part of this group uh, at the end of today's Tuesday Tips Live. So hang on for that. It's totally free. And it's such a great place to hang out and talk DJing with your fellow DJs. You're having a look inside the group here now. Uh, a really good place for beginners to hang out, make friends, network, be accountable all over the world. It's just a lovely, uh, a lovely free thing that we run here that you might not know about. And it's called Global DJ Network. So I'll tell you how you can get in there anyway. Cut a long story short, the reason we're talking about this today is that uh, there was a conversation going over in going on over in Global DJ Network recently about this bit, this very subject. Should you be quick mixing? Should you be playing the whole of your songs? And we uh, we really liked it. There's a lot of great views shared in there, so much so that we wrote an article about it on Digital DJ Tips, which we've just put live just before uh, just before going live with this. So the idea is that this chat we're having here now will slot into that article and then people can kind of discover this in the future. So you can be part of this. So I want your views on it. That's what today is all about. I'd love to know your views on whether we should be playing the whole song or whether we should be playing part of a song. Does it annoy you when DJs quick mix? Are you a hip hop DJ and it's normal to do that kind of slam mixing quickly from song to song? Are you a house DJ and you prefer the blends? Are you an open format DJ? You do a bit of each. I'd really like to know what you think. This is mainly about you today uh, and your views, adding to this debate that's been going on. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping then at the beginning. If you're new to us, we're digital DJ tips. We're the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the Amazon number one seller on how to DJ. We're also the people behind the Digital DJ Tips website, uh, which you can find at digitaldjtips.com uh, and which is a great place to learn about DJ and you're looking at the website now and this is the article I was just talking about but it's not only uh, a place to to kind of read views about things like that it's also a place where you can find out about our DJ courses uh, and also a place where you can uh, get the latest reviews of DJ gear uh, and all that kind of thing so basically great place to hang out so come and find us on digitaldjtips.com and of course if you do like what you see as I just said uh, we've got loads of DJ courses to help you with all kinds of things beginner to advance so that's us if you're not already a subscriber maybe you're watching the replay or maybe you're watching uh the uh the or you joined us late because you didn't know this was on uh look it's easy hit subscribe on youtube hit notify hit like this page and then set our posts to show first in facebook that's all you got to do and then you'll know when we go live uh, and so uh that's it that's the housekeeping over welcome 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 everyone uh, masses and masses and masses of comments coming in already so i'm going to be uh, immediately just uh, sharing a few of those i want to get a few of the hellos out of the way first because it's always nice to say hello to some of our regulars so hello to brandon good to have you here brandon uh, hello to michael uh, hello to DJ Tony Carter and to Moses and to Bolt Shark who says, I love your streams. You're welcome, Bolt Shark over there on Twitch. We are on Twitch, uh, YouTube. We're in Global DJ Network today. Hello if you're watching us there. We're on our Facebook page. We're also on Mixcloud Live. So if you're watching on Mixcloud Live, it's great to have you there as well. And if you are watching a recording of this thinking, get to the point, dude, uh, this is a live show. This is all about the the, the community, this. And um, we take about half an hour to do this. So just to set your expectations. Uh, hello to Flamingo Boss in Portsmouth, UK. Always good to have you here, Tech One TV. And to Cedrip Trump, good to have you here as well. Tony Carter in Vegas, good to have you here, my friend. Uh, and uh, Enea in New York City, DJ Nigel, was good to see you, uh, uh, and Martin, uh, Graham in Turkey, uh, to uh, Diane, always a pleasure, Diane, to have you here on our calls. Uh, so Professor Phil, Diane calls me over there in New York City, so there you go. And hi to Sideshow Moore, who's got a lovely, last night a DJ saved my life uh, avatar there, which was a great charity live stream that we were part of uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. So awesome, nice to see that. Right, okay, let's move on to this on the subject. Right, so 
there's a new age of DJ now, right? The equipment like the, the, the equipment we showed you there, like the lovely Pioneer controllers uh, and all modern DJ equipment that uses software has got lots of aces up its sleeve because it's got looping and it's got hot cues and it's got key mixing and it's got instant access to four decks with all your tunes. It's got sync mixing and sync uh, um, uh, key syncing. Uh, it's got all these things that actually make it very easy to do a new style of mixing when you're banging from track to track to track every minute or every minute and a half. And a lot of DJs do that. Not an awful lot of DJs do it well, but a lot of DJs do it. And it's almost an accepted way of mixing nowadays. I, I alluded at the beginning to the fact that in hip hop, you know, um, I was talking to someone in one of the big DJ software companies. He said, you know, the, the DJs, um, hip hop DJs don't seem to even use our, our EQ controls. They're just banging from track to track. No, not a criticism, just pointing it out. But this is a new way of DJing, and it's a way that only the very, 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 very skilled DJs could do a generation ago. So a generation ago, it was more pedestrian, but now it's got more frantic and quicker, certainly in some styles of music, in some places, and to some crowds. So there's kind of a, a thing going on here, because on the one side, you've got your DJs who are used to telling a story with their music, having a journey, well thought out programming and beat mixes that slowly take you from track to track and you know please and tease you uh, and then there's this school of dj which is just like let's let, let's keep keep it hectic let's play as much as we can and there's kind of been this move from beat mixing to quick mixing uh, and in quick mixing you don't need to and it's not appropriate to beat mix a lot of the time it's a big new thing uh, but also beginners to djing might feel that that's the only way to dj and i think a lot of this is down to youtube because there's a lot of great DJs on YouTube who are building their channels by having lots of this kind of mixing. It's a bit like, you know, those cooking videos where there, there's a, um, some jaunty music playing and there's a camera over a, uh, a work surface in a kitchen and there's everything's being assembled and it's all very stylized and it's all done very quickly. Uh, and at the end of it, there's a lovely meal. You never see anything other than the hands and you're never told how, how to do it. It's just like, oh, I could probably do that one day. Uh, but that's not how we, it's not how we cook food. And those kind of short five minute videos with 15 tracks in on YouTube are awesome. But that's not how mixing can be done, arguably, a lot of the time in the real world. And I think a lot of new DJs see that and think, I need to DJ like that. So, you know, one of those are one of the arguments there is, uh, should DJs be worried about that kind of mixing? Should this be something we worry about if we don't want to do it? So one really interesting thing is that this isn't new. It isn't new at all. Now, there's always been records made that cut quickly from track to track, hands up, hit the love and hit the hearts. If you remember Stars on 45, I will say no more. The uh, the people who are old enough to remember that will know what I'm meaning. Uh, but if you want to do something fun after this, go and Google Stars on 45 or type it into YouTube and have a listen. Stars on 45, like 45 RPM, seven inch singles. Uh, and also, uh, basically, they, they were songs that had lots and lots of tracks in a certain style, like 60s or ABBA. Um, and they were, they were big hits. Um, they were big hits, certainly in the UK, like top five hits. These just medleys made by producers in the studio, a bit like quick mixing. Uh, and then also, there's always been mega mixes, right? DMC mega mixes for mobile DJs, where you get, again, you get lots of current chart hits pre-mixed for you. So you can just play the record. So that's been going on for decades. So it's not like it's anything new, but now it's easier to do it live. I think that's a big difference. So um, before we move on to your comments, I just want to give you some thoughts here to get your juices flowing and get you to share your comments. And we're going to spend the rest of today's Tuesday Tips Live literally just talking through your comments. And by the way, if you're just joining us, we're talking about, about um, this. <laughs> Should DJs play the whole track? Uh, well, that depends. And that's what we're talking about today. Quick mixing, beat mixing, both, bit of each, how should it go? So let me just give you some teaching points on this. If you're there saying, well, I, I don't know, help me, help me out here, Phil. To cut it down to its basics, quick mixing, which is mixing quickly from track to track to track, normally verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you know, individual tracks, uh, is, is great when you want to lift the energy, right? So it's great for peak times. It's great when you want to, you want to really pump a room up. Um, it's also great for older tracks, so, you know, if a track was number one for four months last year uh, and people are still requesting it and you know you've got to play, it's always good to have a short edit or to do a quick mix in out because all people need to do is hear a bit of it and it all comes back to them. The job's done by then, right? 
So uh, older tracks and keeping the energy high, yes, quick mixing is definitely a good thing. Um, I think not to do it, you know, early in the night, if you're doing the warm up and there's no one there, or there's a few people milling around the bar, getting rid of their coats, really? Um, and also all night, you really shouldn't do this all night. It's a bit like a movie with a car chase, right? Car chases are great, but it would it would just wear you out if the movie start and ended and as an hour and a half of car chase, right? Because you need the dynamics. You need the difference between the slow and the fast. You need the difference between the bits where there's a lot going on and it's more pedestrian and more paced. So I think, you know, you need to have ups and downs in your DJ sets and quick mixing is definitely one of the ups. So unless you're doing a routine that people are meant to stand and gore pat or you're trying to make the next million hit YouTube video, all night is probably not a good idea. All right then. That's enough of what I've got to say about this. That's kind of the background and the teaching. I'm just going to hand over to you. Uh, and I'm just going to literally read out your question, your, your um, points here. I'll give you some feedback on them. And you can indeed feedback on each other's. And please do have a comment if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, especially if you're on the Global DJ Network. Chat to each other underneath. Help each other out here. Get stuff going that I don't have to be part of. That's what this is all about. All right, then, let's start doing this. So uh, Ray says, I'm a mobile DJ and I pride myself on playing the whole track, even if it's an 11 minute opus like Steve Wright's EV parts one, two and three. You don't mess with the classics. So there is one definite, you know, that's an open format style DJ, but I play the whole track, says Ray. So uh, I play part of the song because I get tired playing the whole song, says super cool DJ Sav Savvy. Now, there is an argument here that DJs should be looking at whether the dance floor is tired of the song, not thinking, what am I going to do next? You know, DJs often say, people are looking at me and I feel like I need to be doing something, so I play another track. There are other things you can be doing if you really feel like you need to be doing something than, than, than just putting another track on. You can be messing with the track that's currently on, for instance. So I think there's there has to be a distinction drawn here between what the DJ thinks he or she should be doing and whether he or she feels they're bored and what the dance floor wants. So just think about that one. Next time you think I'm bored, I better mix a new track in. But thank you very much for that super cool DJ Savvy. Uh, Christian says, hi, hi, Phil. That depends on the people on the dance floor. Um, or never play songs with repeated chorus too long, like Happy from Pharrell Williams. Yeah, a lot of songs are pretty boringly structured, aren't they? It's almost like they ran out of ideas after a minute and they just piled in stuff at the end. And other songs have got a lot more going on with them, right? I mean, let's just pick an absolute classic. Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody probably deserves to be played in full, doesn't it? Because it's 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 almost like a you know an opera in itself. It's got its its, its beginning, its middle, and its its end. It's it's, it's a whole. Um, but a lot of songs, and you just mentioned "Happy" by Pharrell Williams, massive hit, of course. They're not like that. And once you've Especially because and I think this goes back to my kind of older songs, doesn't it? Once you've played a verse and a chorus of a song that's as big as that, you've probably done all you need to do. Uh, Leo says it depends on the mood and the vibe. Suddenly you have to let a track rock. Um, someone over on our uh, global DJ network says if the crowd feels it, knows the lyrics and the choreography, then long play it. If they're not feeling it, move on sooner. I mean, this is another thing about DJing that has always been this way, isn't it? If a track's not working for... God's sake, get out of that track, right? There's a lot of the stuff we teach in our in our mixing power skills and our mixing mastery, our courses that are the purely about, about transitions is how to get out of a track that's not working and to do it gracefully. So yeah, it's a very, very good point that you raised there, our, our, our student over on Global DJ Network. Um, I think should, DJ should learn patience, especially with house. Uh, you want to fade away the song nicely. Yeah, and you know, and this is another thing about genres, isn't it? Certain genres lend themselves to this kind of slow mixing and certain genres to faster mixing. House, I guess, is more pedestrian, more paced, whereas hip-hop and pop, open format style DJ, you're definitely going to be a bit more chop and changey, aren't you? Um, and Ken kind of makes that point. It really depends on the track. Uh, so Hawke says, from my experience, when I started my career as a DJ in 1980, it was almost mandatory to play the complete song. Today, things are different and the themes play less and less time. And that's very true. So people, do you think it's mobile phones? Do you think that this whole generation, the, you know, millenni millennials are aging now, right? The Gen Z is the next lot. Do you think these generations are coming in and expecting it life to be bang, 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 and a, a bit bored by things being slower and more pedestrian? Is it a generation thing? So uh, share that with us, please. What do you think about that? Um, I play the full track most of the time, says Kevin. 
what's the point in playing it if you're not going to play all or most of it? Uh, so uh, on Tech, Tech One TV, I think you should play the whole song. Some people like a song and cutting it will tick them off while they're dancing and enjoying, enjoying it. A lot of you are saying things like, you know, it is a judgment call. Brandon agrees with that. It depends on the dance floor. I think that's probably one of the things we're going to say at the end of this is in our conclusion. It does depend on the dance floor. Uh, so uh, Bram says, I prefer the whole song, but it depends on the track. Uh, lots of modern tracks seem very similar on the rhythm. Therefore, quick mixing to new melodies could be the best option. But getting really into a track, you need to play the whole one. David, Man, uh, David Mancuso style. So David Mancuso legendary DJ from the loft in New York, of course, uh, and uh, really didn't mix. He was more curator of music. Uh, there's some wonderful compilations from the loft in New York, by the way, you can get on CD. I'm sure they're probably on Spotify now with some great music on it. Uh, Ign Ignatius just says, I'm watching on the lockdown. Uh, very interesting topic. So glad uh, you're finding it interesting. Uh, here's a good alternative opinion. This is from uh, Aaron, who says, I'm a drum and bass DJ, so I usually mix my next track in at the second build up or drop but I let the first track ride out while it's playing in time with the other ones, like double dropping and beat mixing the tracks together. So there's also um, a point to make here. A lot of modern house music, even that you get from Download Pools, DJ City, Zip DJ, BPM Supreme and so on, even those kind of tracks now tend to be shorter, don't they? A lot of them are three or four minutes long, three sometimes, and they have a very short intro and outro section on the beats. So a lot of the, the fun with modern music, and you know, drum and bass has always done this. Drum and bass has always done what's called double dropping, where you have the breakdowns and the drops coinciding to give an extra push when those two tracks hit together, and then they get played together with maybe some DJ tricks. But even on modern house music, it's very easy to overlap the tracks, so there's always something going on, and you don't have these bits where it's just beats. Um, so Paul says, I'm an open format DJ. I don't think you need to play the full song, but at least 80% of it. It annoys me when DJs are jumping between tracks, especially when they're changing genres. So that's a uh, that's a good point. Changing genres, it might be that, you know, if you're going to do quick mixing, don't change genres too often because short minute and a half segments plus regular genre changes gets too much for people. Uh, and if you're going to do the regular genre changes, maybe let the tracks play a bit more. So it's a good little bit of a... Um, a twist on it there about the genres um, and you know lots of you saying the same thing about the audience it comes down to the type of audience you have in front of you it's proven to be a really important and fun topic this because i've got so many comments so i'm going to have to start picking and choosing them now i'm looking for kind of different different takes on what we've already talked about so nick's a techno dj and says it's preferable to play most of the tune there but other genres not so much so that's back to the the dj uh, the genre thing as well uh, with Latin American music as well as emo rock, the crowds get really upset when you don't play the entire song. Oh, Lord, don't they? You cannot play a Latin event where, where you cannot play where you've got formal dancing, especially. You know, you can't play half a waltz and then go into a foxtrot. And even modern Latin stars, they tend to play the whole track. I went to a Latin night recently in Malaga in Spain, Latin country, right? And the uh, Hispanic country and the music was... Uh, segwayed on on on, on Winamp, I think, uh, and they just had the tracks all lined up and the audience were, were coming on and off the floor depending on whether they like the songs or not. So yeah, well, well done. Thank you for mentioning Latin American music. Also, you know, it happens with, uh, with lots of genres where people are expecting the whole song, like more formal dancing, like I was just mentioning. Uh, so uh, Raymond in Scotland says, it, it, it really depends on your situation. If I'm doing a party, then quick mixes and edits work well, but if it's a club set, then longer mixes worth, worth better. So yeah, there's a difference here between playing parties and playing clubs. So I really like that distinction. Thank you for making that one, Raymond. Uh, Philip says, I'm a lounge DJ, no dance floor. I play the whole track unless it has an extended silence before a coda, and then I'll mix out there or do a beat jump. On the rare nights I'm doing a dance party, I'll split songs as necessary. Yeah, so bar DJs, lounge DJs, it's another place where quick mixing probably isn't quite... Uh, as important, in fact, isn't isn't, isn't at all appropriate. So Darrow says, club goers usually have a short attention span and prefer the energy of the mix. I'm not going to tell you how many times I've heard women wish the DJ would play the next record. It's probably just because they didn't like the current one and they were vocal enough to tell you. Uh, but I don't know about that. And I'm sure that's not confined to women. Uh, but thank you for that, Darrow. If it's a good track, I'd say at least leave it till, the, till after the second verse. And this is specifically for hip hop, says Chris. Uh, and I have the Pioneer, uh, oh, sorry, no, that's completely, if you've got any questions, and Jad had a question there, 
If you've got any questions which are not applicable to the to today's topic, because this is Tuesday Tips Live when we have a particular COT topic, but if you've got a question that's not applicable to today's topic, come at the same time on Thursday, because on Thursdays we have our Thursday Q&A when it's open house. You can ask anything you want and I'll help you with it. Uh, so Ben says, I believe in quality over quantity. It sounds far too rough around the edges to move through songs too quickly. I agree people should be taught to mix properly with longer, more detailed mixes. So that's an interesting one, Ben, because the best open format DJs can mix extremely skillfully between tracks where we're literally only playing a minute or two of them. So I don't think it's down to waiting to the end because it's easier to mix. Although if you want to have you know, really uh, clean mixes, that might be better. It's down to getting good at doing what's necessary to do these quick mixes if you want. Uh, and uh, again, our power, our Mixing Power Skills course, which you can find over on the course, courses page on the website, is totally about that. It's totally about getting you uh, confidence so that you can do the kind of mixes, you know, because if you want to do quick mixing, uh, and you like DJing, and you like to be known as a DJ who can mix, it can be pretty annoying. Uh, because it, you might find that you just haven't got that skill set yet. And so you don't want to be that DJ who suddenly is just doing, you know, rubbishy quick mixes. Uh, and that's what mixing power skills is about that I'm showing you on the course now. It's how you can perform mixes across genres and BPMs uh, and mix anything into anything, including lots and lots of quick mixing and still keep the skill up. Because if you're not doing beat mixing, what are you doing instead? You've got to master loops. You've got to master cues, hot cues. You've got to master using key to help you with this stuff. You've got to master sync so you can lock tracks and change the BPMs quickly and all that. But it's a really good point to make. You know, if you're going to make a mess of it, as Ben says, probably best not to do it and to put the work in to make sure that you do it right uh, so it doesn't upset people. Um, you don't want you to sound like a broken jukebox that keeps skipping, says Adrian. Again, as I was saying, saying about Ben's point, uh, it's uh, you've got to get good at doing this. You know, you can't just slam track after track after track and think it's going to sound awesome. Uh, all right, then. Uh, someone on Facebook remembers Stars on 45 says, I must be getting old. Um, so Chris says, I know some of them because they appeared on classic pop albums. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, so Sideshow Mall says, I, I'll mix out sometimes before the end and sometimes I'll play it until the end if I'm enjoying it. And of course, the dance floor. It all depends on the show or club or event uh, that you are attending. Uh, so all right, then. Um, let's find some stuff which is slightly uh, different. Uh, from some of the stuff we've shared. Oh yeah, Ray Ray remembers Jive Bunny and the Mix Masters, other people who are doing that. Uh, and Ollie points out that, you know, if you've got the skills, you can do this. Like Grandmaster Flash could do quick mixes and keep a crowd entertained. Uh, quick mixing does have its um, roots in hip hop, doesn't it? And in real classic hip hop mixing. But that said, I think DJ AM really brought it to the fore for open format DJs uh, and made it kind of normal and, and desirable to do this kind of mixing if you were open format. Uh, so lots of you remembering stars on 45 now. Uh, Rob says quick mixing is more creative. It's ideal for a section of the gig, but I wouldn't quick mix all night. Uh, so uh, Matt says, I hate it when the DJ drops a track I really like and then decides it's okay to switch out after the first chorus. Personally, as a house trance DJ, I think you need to play most of the track. The first and the last minute needs to be blended into something else to really be classed as mixing. So you're quite stuck in, your, stuck in what you believe there, which is great. A lot of DJs are just like you. Um, Chris says, uh, I recommend you search for how the mega mixes were made for radio after this video on Google. There's obviously some good stuff there that we should be checking out. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Kyle, while I get that, I feel that if a song's worth playing, why would you not play the whole song? Uh, so uh, a lot of you got the same sentiment. If a track's boring, uh, get it out the mix. If a track's doing well, you know, leave it playing. Um, so... Uh, uh, yesterday, a DJ played 140 tracks in four hours, Graham Reddy. Couldn't believe it. You know, I don't want you to think that we're coming down on either side of this debate. We're, we're for all kinds of DJing. For instance, I, I my style tends to go towards the beat mixing style, but then I'll find tracks that, that work as mashups and do something creative within that beat mixing style. It's just the way I like to DJ. Um, and, you know, it doesn't stop me doing quick mixing when I want to. And I'll give you another example. Steve, Steve Canueto, my, my um, uh, uh, partner here at Digital DJ Tips, He's doing a mix on Sunday and you can actually catch it on Sunday in 25 minutes from now. So whatever time it says on your watch now or your phone, 25 minutes time, the top of that hour, wherever you are in the world, um, Steve will be doing a mix on our YouTube channel and also on Mixcloud Live. Oh, that reminds me, I better go over to Mixcloud Live and see if we've got any chat going on there. And uh, it's going to be a, a tribute to Todd Terry. And Steve has got, he's going to be quick mixing the whole thing. I think the biggest time he plays a track for is one minute 30 
you know, so there are definitely times when this is something worth doing and we, we go for it. We love it. We, we understand. So um, it's not like we're trying to come down one way or another. We just want to teach you to do it right, whatever you choose. Uh, so I'm going to read out a few comments. We can't get the mixed cloud comments on screen yet, but I can still read them out. So a brother named Sherm over on mixed cloud says, this is a great question. I go back and forth personally with that choice. I really think it depends on the on the on the crowd as to whether you play the whole track or quick mix. Uh, so, uh, if you want to check us out on Mixcloud, by the way, you can do it on the app now on the phone app. So you don't have to go to the website. Mixcloud is developing its Mixcloud Live platform really nicely at the moment, uh, and it's actually getting very busy. We've got um, over fifty viewers there now for a platform that's only been there for three or four weeks. We're pretty. Pretty pleased with that. We've had our Digital DJ Tips Mixed Cloud page for about three or four weeks as well. Um, but hello, whatever channel you're watching us on. Judge Bird, Judge Bud on Mixed Cloud says, I play house, so after the drop, I look at the phrases and see when to bring it in. I use effects too to make it more interesting. Um, and DJ Herschel on Mixed Cloud, I'm an open format club DJ. I average a song uh, play three minutes 30 to four minutes to prevent it getting boring. If you think of a radio ev edit, it averages three minutes 30. Well, it used to. They're getting shorter and shorter though, aren't they? Um, so um, I wish you could do a study in the Southeast USA. Right, this is something we haven't talked about, people. Geography. Is it that certain places in the world do it in a different way? And V Lang on our um, Mixcloud page says, I wish you could do a study in the Southeast USA. There's a really eclectic vibe that sees all these theories at work. Hip hop anthems just to the first hook, blues, the whole song. That's awesome. Uh, to O'Sheen over on Mixcloud, this is a tech talk uh, podcast, I think you'd call it, or a tech talk show. It's not a mix show. Our mix shows are on Sundays, just to let you know. So I will not be shutting up and playing, as you so beautifully put it. Why can't people just be polite? It costs Nothing, does it, folks? Okay, so thank you very much. Our overwhelmingly brilliant crowd over there on Mixcloud. Thank you for your comments. Uh, right, okay, so let's uh, let's kind of get close to rounding it up, but I do want to get, you know, there's so many people who've got so much to say about this, which is just awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, on our channels for joining in on this. Um, so I, a lot of you are saying the same kind of thing, so I just want to try and pull some comments out, which is slightly different, but thank you for everyone who's kind of reinforced all the different views uh, going on here. Um, Powell says, it's good to master beat matching, but it's also good to use the sync button to get more fun with the crowd or mixing. Yeah, that's the thing. When you're doing quick mixing, a lot of the best quick mix DJs are using sync all the time because it's just easier. It just takes less time than having to get the track in speed manually. When you are house mixing, frankly, sometimes you need something to do. So manual beat mixing is part of the fun. Uh, but uh, uh, Colin says, the cut-up boys that did the mashup CDs were great at it. It sounded good, but yes, a 30-minute mashup quick mix is okay in the middle of the night. Um, but I guess what you're saying there is not all night long, which a lot of people are are saying as well. Let me know about geography, by the way. Is, do you think it's to do with where you are? That was a really good point one of our Mixed Cloud viewers said. Um, so uh, Abba Yome said, I had the honour of interviewing Patrick Adams. He said the songs he made told a story from beginning to end. He appreciated remixes and quick mixes, but he said it took away from what he made. His songs were made to be played until the end. You know, this is down to the genres, isn't it? A lot of music is made to be mixed with. Think about the locked groove style of tech house and minimal house. They're made to be mixed with. Even that kind of house music, you probably wouldn't play them end to end. You'd be layering them and messing around with them. Um, so, uh, so again, that's down to the genre question, isn't it? Uh, Ignatius says, I'm a mobile DJ and for weddings I turn to play, I tend to play a track uh, about three quarters and mix. But the old classics like the cha-cha slide have got to be played all the way through to the end. This is back to the tracks people expect to be played to the end, isn't it? I guess the cha-cha slide is another kind of formal dance. It's a track that has a dance to it, like, you know, waltzes and Latin music. Uh, and so, uh, some Latin music, of course. And so people expect them to be played to the end. Uh, so um, finally, let's just have a few more comments to end this off with. And then I'll tell you how you can get into Global DJ Network, which is where this all started. It's a wonderful group. Four DJs by DJs. We run it, we administer it, but it's not about us, it's about you guys. And there's many thousands of DJs in there getting a lot of help uh, from each other in this awesome hobby that we have. So um, I'll tell you how to get into that in a minute. John is saying the modern people have a short attention span. Brandon's agreeing. The attention sounds have got so much, so much shorter. Uh, but again, this comes down to checking the crowd, doesn't it? And knowing whether or not the crowd uh, are loving it. But it's an interesting point. Would you do it on a live stream where you don't know whether people are bored or not? Um, so uh, I'm going from the dance club scene to the lounge club scene where dancing is, dancing is second. 
but song content is important so i play most of it and sometimes all of it uh corey says you should never play a whole track in an, an entire track in the top 40 club this is kind of the difference between parties and you know underground or house clubs like i guess uh coming through again here um all right then uh, and we'll get one or two mixes uh, young young crowds would hate me uh says a facebook uh, user uh, playing eight or nine minutes uh, tracks, deep progressive tech house and journey music. Um, and someone else on Facebook says, uh, Salsa music is expected to play a whole song. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about, wasn't it? Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you know, pop music now sometimes is two and a half minutes long. Uh, a big vocal house track might be nine minutes long in its full extended club mix, mightn't it? So again, it's going to depend on the size of your... Uh, it's going to depend on the size of your tunes in the first place, I guess, whether you play them all. Um, so Adrian is pointing out a bit of history that Andy C basically invented the double drop that we were talking about earlier in the drum and bass scene. That's very uh, interesting. Right, geography. Thank you very much for sharing geography. Someone on our Facebook group that I'm going to tell you how to get into in a minute said, uh, at Venezuelan parties, there was a time called La Hora Loca. Uh, which is a series of one-hit wonders. You cannot play full songs in this scenario. Only one chorus. La Hora Loca, the mad hour. I love it. I've learned something today. Um, my wife and kids think you should play the whole song. Uh, but when remixing, you should cut out early, says Michael. So thank you very much for sharing that. Um, I'm just looking for some more geography stuff, geography-related stuff. Diane says, I grew up on the music of the 60s and 70s, soul, rock, disco, funk, and jazz fusion. And though I only recently learned to DJ, I've been making mixtapes since the late 70s. Plus, that music was so well arranged with real instruments and all that most of my faves are good to the last drop. I can keep a dance floor going for hours thanks to wonderful remixes of my favourite classics. But my favourite venues to DJ in are retail and corporate because I have several hours to create an atmosphere. Kind of like David Mancuso that Phil just mentioned. So, Diane, you're definitely a let it play and play those long sets and take, a, take people on a journey, girl. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, reggae dances, don't cut the song too quick. The crowd will not appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, let the music work for you, not you for it, says Gareth. Uh, so I like that. Uh, and um, so I'm just looking for one or more uh, uh, comments just about this geography thing. I want to get those because we're a global school, right? So I want to get that stuff from all around the world in. Uh, so uh, some of you are just saying it's a personal preference thing, really. Uh, and um, so, so yeah, I'm just looking for people saying something about where they live uh, because uh, that is, that's what I wanted to end on here. Uh, but most of you seem to be kind of agreeing wh wherever you live. Uh, that that's the way it is. Uh, in Atlanta, the younger crowd hates it when you play the whole song. 130 tops, says Kid Kreutz. So there you go. Uh, all right, then. I'm going to end it there, although we could have gone on for an hour, frankly. It's so, so good. This is my favourite time of my whole working week is having these chats with you guys in the community and girls in the community because it's... Uh, because it is, uh, I learned something. Uh, so, for instance, Sal Jaffa in Pakistan, um, where I perform to listen to the whole song or repeat the same song again. You've got to play, play the same song twice. Uh, so, wow, think about that. Colin just says, bring back 14-minute tunes. Brandon says, geography, both worldwide and local are different. Yeah, even in two clubs in the same town. I see that. I played with another DJ who didn't get into the music needed of the customer. He played most songs to the end, had fairly good success, but I quick mixed and had very good results. We were deep in the country area, uh, about an hour from uh, the city, and it didn't go down well at first. Line dances and specific requests were all they wanted. Uh, okay, uh, so just say hello to Brazil, says M. Frieza. We'll go on then, we'll say hello to Brazil. Right, to end off, people, I want to tell you how you can be part of the Global DJ Network. Hit those likes and hearts, by the way, right now, if you're already part of this. Um, so the Global DJ Network is our... We run it as a service to the DJ community. It's a group by DJs for DJs. That's the best way to describe it. And uh, the Global DJ Network is an awesome place to hang out if you want help in your DJing, you want to meet DJs globally who can advise you, you want to share your wins, you want to share your frustrations, you want to talk about our courses, other people's courses, any other way of learning to DJ, uh, if you want to meet up with each other. It's run by us, but it's kind of independent of us. We just keep people on the rules and, uh, you know, guide the conversation sometimes. And this is where we found... Uh, the thing we've been talking about today in the Global DJ Network. It's this DJ here, Matt Dodge, who's on the screen now, who said, I play open format. I'm noticing that playing so many songs in a four-hour period. Uh, should I let songs play longer? And this, uh, with its uh, 40 comments, it was only posted a few hours ago, started this whole debate, led to us putting this on the website. Uh, whoops, uh, 
the stuff on the website that I was showing you earlier, which I can get back to, uh, that this post here, a long time ago we talked about that. Look how many pages I've shown you. There it is. Should DJs play the whole track? Well, that depends. You can read about this over on the website, by the way, right now. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of traffic going to it. This is what my secret panel at the top tells me. 932 people looking at that uh, uh recently so you know a lot of people are, are going in there although most people are commenting over on uh, facebook at the moment the comments under here tend to tend to light up over the months and years not in the first few minutes anyway i digress i want you to be part of the facebook group here's the facebook group and here is how to get into it all you've got to do is head over to this address and uh djtips.co no www slash global uh, global global head over there djtips.co slash global and uh you can join the group you'll have to click join group and my team let you in manually uh because this is a private group but you know you're all great people uh, we want you in there so it's not like you have to be tested or anything uh, we'll just check uh, that you're not a you know a pornographic spammer from russia uh, and then we'll let you in um so uh, so that's the way it works. Uh, so people, thank you very, very much for being here today. Thank you for sharing the conversation. As always, it's been awesome. Uh, and uh, listen, I'll see you on Thursday at the same time for the open Q&A. Steve's on uh, Sunday uh, about now, 10 minutes from now. Steve will be here on Sunday, apart from on Facebook, uh, with his Todd Terry tribute mix. And uh, well, we're done for today. All that's left for me to say is get good, get out there and make the moments. Oh, one more thing to tell you, if you've been waiting for our all new Scratching for Controller DJs course to open for 2020, it's good news because on Wednesday of this week, it will be open. It's uh, our all new Scratching for Controller DJs course and uh, it will have a, an awesome offer for the 2020 launch week uh, with an awesome offer of bonuses and an awesome price. So if you're not on our mailing list, go to djtips.co slash join. Do it now uh, and we'll let you know by email how you can get that awesome price reduction on our flagship scratch course, which has taught thousands of people to scratch. Right, I really am going to get out of here now. Thank you very much, people. Keep the conversation going in the comments. My team will be helping you out there as well, but help each other out. Talk to each other there uh, afterwards. And uh, look, I'll see you very soon. Till next time, goodbye. <laughs>